Now, today we're going to be talking about what's called the unit circle and it's going to combine uh, a bit of what we did on day one and what we did yesterday. So the unit circle is a circle that has a center at the origin, so 0, 0, and the radius is going to be 1. And the x coordinate of each point on the circle is the value of cosine of an angle, so cosine of theta. And the y coordinate is going to be sine of theta. And tangent, as we talked about, is sine over cosine of theta. Now, to really understand at the beginning, does x does the x coordinate go with the cosine or the y coordinate go with sine? That can be uh, traced back to the alphabet because if you have x and y, x comes before y in the alphabet, and c comes before s in the alphabet. So that's how you can uh, remember which ones go uh, go together. And when we talk about learning the unit circle, some of the things that you will be required to know uh, is the degree measure of special angles, the radian measure of those special angles, the xy coordinate of the special angles, which again are the cosine for x and sine for y. And from there, we can also calculate tangent as well, if we know the sine and cosine. And you know, yesterday we had these angles. These are those special angles um, that I'm talking about, and we briefly talked about them yesterday. So another new term is called a quadrantal, quadrantal angle. It's an angle in standard position whose terminal side is on uh, an axis, an axis, either the x or y axis. So it's always a multiple of 90 degrees or pi over 2 because 90 degrees is pi over 2. So what we're going to do now is identify those sine and cosine values of those special angle measures. And we've already talked about these special angle measures in degrees. You know, those special angle measures are the 30 degrees, the 45 degrees, the 60 degrees, and then we're also going to throw in 90 degrees and 0 degrees. And you know, all the way back up here, we said, okay, the sine of 30 degrees is going to be always reduced down to one half. So that is the y coordinate of 30 degrees. And the x coordinate of 30 degrees is square root of 3 over 2. So doing this legwork uh, a few days ago is going to make this a bit easier. And I said, you know, start memorizing these so that it will make uh, your life easier later on. So now back down here, you have you know, that 30, 60, 90 triangle. Well, your 30 degrees right here, and our y coordinate is 1 half of the sine value, and that cosine value of the x coordinate is square root of 3 over 2 of this point. And we can also then reflect this to the other quadrants. You see, if we take this point and reflect it over here, okay, only thing that's going to change are the, um, the signs of the coordinates. So either positive or negative, or negative to positive. And then we can also reflect that down here, and reflect that over here. And on the next page, we're going to fill those in. Similar, similarly, with 60 degrees, okay, here's your point. And we know from our table that the cosine of 60 degrees is 1 half, and the sine or the y coordinate is the square root of 3 over 2. It's the same thing as the same values as 30 degrees, but switched. 
And again, we can then reflect this to the other quadrants and only thing that will, that will change uh, is the positive or negative signs in front. And then with 45 degrees, the value, the, the actual number is going to be the square root of 2 over 2 for the x and y coordinates. But when we reflect them to different quadrants, the signs again will, will change. So let's go to the next page and start filling in this unit circle. So here's a unit circle. We, we are going to start at 0 degrees, which is also 0 pi. The coordinates of 0 degrees, well, we're not rotating anything, so the, the coordinates are going to be 1, 0. That's the coordinates of those points. So that allows us to say, oh, the cosine of 0 is 1, and the sine of 0 is 0. Then what I want to do is I want to do the 30 degree ones first. So here's 30 degrees, which in radians is pi over 6. And now our coordinates, we have the square root of 3 over 2, comma, 1 half. Now we're going to reflect this point across the, the y-axis, and that's going to end up over here. So the angled measure you know, up here, 50 degrees sorry, 150 degrees. So the angle measure is going to be 150 degrees. And your radian measure is going to be 5 pi over 6. Now the sine and cosine values, or the x and y values, it's going to be the square root of 3 over 2 and 1 half. But we are now in quadrant 2, where the x values are negative. So this is going to be negative square root of 3 over 2. All right now we're going to reflect this down here into quadrant 3, where the angle measure is 210 degrees, or 7 pi over 6. And again, it's still going to be the square root of 3 over 2 comma 1 half. But now that we're in quadrant 3, the x and y values are going to be negative. And then lastly, we will reflect this over here uh, where we have 330 degrees. And that's going to be, in radians, 11 pi over 6. And again, those came from, you know, here's your angle measures in degrees. And then up here, your radians and degrees. And 330 is 11 pi over 6. So now the x and y coordinates, square root of 3 over 2 and 1 half, but we are in quadrant 4 where the x values are still positive, the y values become negative. So those are the coordinates for um, you know, the 30 degree angles, what I call them. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the 60 degree angles. So this is 60 degrees. Again, I'm getting that from up here. It goes 30, then 45, then 60. The reason I wanted to do 60 is because those angles 
have the x the same x and y coordinates as the 30 degree ones but just flipped or switched so instead of this being the square root of 3 over 2 comma 1 half it's going to be 1 half 1 half comma square root of 3 over 2 so then we'll go and reflect this point over here this angle is going to be 120 degrees and it's going to be 2 pi over 3 and I'm going to have 1 half comma square root of 3 over 2 but in this quadrant remember all the x values or cosine values are negative. Then we will reflect that point down here where the angle measure is going to be 240 degrees or 4 pi over 3 and 1 half comma square root of 3 over 2 but since we're in quadrant 3 both values are negative and then we'll reflect that one more time right here where it's going to be 300 degrees and 5 pi over 6 and the coordinates of this point will be 1 half square root of 3 over 2 but because we are in the uh, fourth quadrant the y values will be negative. All right now the 45s 45 degrees that is going to be pi over 4 and as we looked in the first day, the sine and cosine values of 45 degrees are square root of 2 over 2, the, both of them. And then we can reflect that point over here. So this will be 135 degrees, or 3 pi over 4. And this color square root of 2 over 2 comma square root of 2 over 2 but the x coordinates are negative then we will reflect this down here this is going to be 225 degrees or um, 5 pi over 4 5 pi over 4 and we're going to square root of 2 over 2 and square root of 2 over 2. But since we're in quadrant 3, both are negative. And then finally, we have 315 degrees or 7 pi over 4. And that will give us square root of 2 over 2, comma square root of 2 over 2, where the y coordinate is negative. So now what we're left with are the quadrantal angles, you know, those 90 degrees. So up here we have 90 degrees, which is pi over 2. Because remember we talked about how 1 pi is half a circle. So this is a quarter circle, which will be half of pi, or pi over 2. Now the x and y coordinates here are 0, 1. You know, here's your origin, 0 over 1 up. Then another 90 degrees will take us to 180, which we know is just pi. The x and y coordinates here, negative 1, 0. We didn't go up or down from the origin. Then here we have 270 degrees, or 3 pi over 2. So 0, negative 1. And then 360 degrees, or 2 pi, have the same x and y coordinate as 0 because we've gone through a full circle. So I can promise you that the more you use these, the, the easier it gets. And it looks like there's a lot of information here, but a lot of it is also repeated. You know, one of the patterns that I use, I'm sorry, this should be pi over 4. One of the patterns that I use 
is to you know look at this the pi over six or thirty degrees. And like I was saying, when I get to sixty, when she's skipping one, I know it's the same coordinates but flipped. All right, we can skip another one. Then we have another pi over three, and it reflects from um, the first quadrant, and so on. So being able to reflect these is going to be super important. Um, we should also you know, sign is positive, and so is cosine, which remember is x um, and y both are positive. Over here, cosine is negative, but sine is still positive. Down here, both are negative. Sine and cosine are negative. And in quadrant four, cosine is positive and sine is negative. And that means when we talk about tangent, because tangent is sine over cosine, that's also going to change signs depending on what quadrant we are in. So down here, we're going to do some of these problems uh, you know, using the unit circle up here. Evaluate each function. So sine of 135, if I go up and look at 135 degrees, the sine is the y value. So that's the square root of 2 over 2. The cosine of 210. Okay. 210 is right here. The cosine is square root of negative square root of 3 over 2. Tangent of 60. Tangent is sine over cosine. So we're going to do the sine value, square root of 3 over 2. over 1 half because that's the cosine value and we can then simplify this the square root of 3 over 2 times 2 over 1 they cancel and we're left with the square root of 3 now remember back in day 1 the tangent of 60 degrees the tangent was the square root of 3, which is what we just calculated down here, doing the, sa doing the same thing. So what I want you to do is I want you to try the rest of these, uh, looking at your unit circle, and see what you get. All right, so here's what I got. The sine of 11 pi over 6 came right from the unit circle. It was negative 1 half. Cosine of pi over 4 again came from the unit circle. That was uh, square root of 2 over 2. The tangent of 5 pi over 4, well, the sine of 5 pi over 4 is negative square root of 2 over 2, and so is the cosine. So I had negative square root of 2 over 2 over negative square root of 2 over 2. Because I have the same thing on top and bottom, that just simplifies down to negative 1. The sine of pi is 0. Again, came from the unit circle, the y-coordinate. Cosine is 0. Cosine is the x value, 1. Tangent of 2 pi, tangent is sine over cosine. The sine of 2 pi is 0 over the cosine of 2 pi, which is 1, which simplifies to 0. And the tangent of 270, the sine of 270 is negative 1, that's the y value, over the cosine, 0 which gives you undefined because you can't have zero in the denominator. So this is a lesson that you will want to refer back to because the unit circle is something that's going to be used a lot and you will need to be able to you know, come up with and recite these values fairly quickly uh, when, I, when you are asked to. So thanks for watching. Make sure to like the video and subscribe.